one of the first personalities on this seat, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, who started seven years ago. So it's the awkward part of the year where it's between Christmas and New Year and I have no idea what day it is and I have no idea what to do but I know I need to get out of the house so I thought I'd bring you with me and tell you a little story uh, if you see over there I'm not sure how clear the picture will be well, that is centre stage at Butlins in Skegness and a bit of, big bit of Beatles history happened right in there. I can't get in because Butlins is closed, coronavirus, we're all doomed. No, we're not, we're nearly through it. Um, but a big bit of Beatles history happened there and if you want a spoiler, Ringo joins the Beatles. But if you want the story, just stay tight. Cause we're gonna I'm gonna tell you a little story as I walk to the sea. It'll be beautiful. Um tell you a little story about a band that you might not know, but if you're in Liverpool in the 1960s, you certainly know you knew of them and if you were the Beatles, you knew about them. Because it's said, and history does kind of prove, that they were at one point slightly ahead of the Beatles as the band in Liverpool. Now, of course, Liverpool in the 1960s would become the center stone of music in the world. Mersey Beat took off and everybody wanted to be in Liverpool. Now the band I'm talking about who were ahead of the Beatles as kings of Liverpool were Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. Now Rory Storm was born Alan Caldwell and he was the king of Liverpool. He was the golden boy and he was the ultimate stage man. The most infamous Rory Storm story is playing at New Brighton and the old swimming baths in New Brighton. And he was singing and he climbed all the way to the top diving board. He stripped off just to his swimming trunks and jumped as the song finished and dove into the pool. There were some crazy stories about, how, about him being a showman. He was playing at New Brighton and he climbed to the top of the pavilion and slipped and fell and fractured his leg. So he sounds like a, well, he sounds like he was good fun to see live. Now, Rory Storm was a gifted sportsman, a gifted, gifted in athletics. He was a runner and he ran for the Pembroke Harriers. But he also played, trained with Liverpool at Melwood. Melwood, which is recently just, Liverpool have just left Melwood, if, I, uh, if, I, if I'm correct. Um, he was a keen swimmer, and by keen swimmer, he swam Lake Windermere, which is 13 miles. So very good at athletics. But when he became, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes were huge in Liverpool, bigger than the Beatles. All these people from like Liverpool at the time of the Beatles always seemed to be bigger than the Beatles. Um, so I always feel a bit weird. Um, but he had more to do with the Beatles than just Ringo. He 
1958, he, he invented the skiffle club in Liverpool called the Morgue. And it's a place where the Beatles, the Quarrymen, the Beatles' first name, played. And it's also in the Morgue is where George Harrison auditioned to be in the Quarrymen. And he got the gig. And that's where George Harrison entered the Beatles as well. So from a club that Rory Storm opened. It was only going for a month. And that big bit of history happened there. It's also somewhere where I might do somewhere where the Beatles played in the future. And it said, my battery's about to die, so that's why I'm stuttering a little bit. Um, and it's bloody cold. And Rory's sister, Iris, dated George Harrison and later Paul McCartney and married Alvin Stardust. She must like a bit of rock and roll. Um, I think the tide's coming in. Um, now it said George was only dating Iris because he wanted to be in the band. Um, Rory saw a storm in the hurricanes and Rory Storm felt he was too young to be in the band. And if you think, oh my God, that's a massive error. Well, John Lennon also thought the same and Rory Storm was older than John Lennon. So when you're a teen, your ages mean a bit more. Um, but Rory Storm would continue to top the bill. They were said to be the band and they were Alan Williams, who is famous for being the Beatles' first manager. They were his first choice to go to Hamburg. Uh, the Beatles infamously played Hamburg, kind of learned their trade in Hamburg. And Alan Williams wanted Rory Storm in the Hurricanes first. Um, Rory Storm in the Hurricanes would... Well, I'll get to the Ringo bit. Rory Storm met Richard Starkey at a talent spotting competition and asked him to be in the band and he was in the band and they were talents they were also talent spotted to perform at Butlins they started their first season in Wales and it was through doing Butlins that they decided we need stage names we can't be Richard Starkey Alan Caldwell so he became Rory Storm and Richie Starkey became Ringo Starr. Now, they, they turned professional when they started playing Butlins. They were on each £25 a week, which in modern translation is £2,000 a month, which is good going today to be in a band. Um, going back to Hamburg, Rory Storm couldn't do the Hamburg initial, they, uh, I always want to call them Derek and the Dominoes. <laughs> They're not Derek and the Dominoes. I'll put the name up there, I can't remember it. But they were a huge success in Hamburg, they were a Liverpool band. And the chap that owned the Kaiser Keller, the club in Hamburg they played, wanted another Scouse band and they wanted Roy, Alan Williams wanted Rory Storm, they couldn't make it. Then he went to send Jerry and the Pacemakers, they couldn't make it. And so the Beatles were third choice. Later on, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes would make it to Hamburg with So my battery died. It was probably a good place to stop because I wasn't taking a breath. So Rory Storm and the Hurricanes went to Hamburg. They were paid more than the Beatles and they were above the Beatles on the bill. They were, they were the Beatles, if you look at the posters, I'm sure I'll share them. They're down the order, the Beatles. It's just crazy to think. Um, 
The Beatles and Rory Solomon, the Hurricanes would do 12 hour sets. They would do the Beatles for 90 minutes, then they would rest for 90 minutes, and during that 90 minutes, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes would perform. For 12 hours, they did that. And people think, like, the reason, arguably, apart from being ridiculously talented, the reason the Beatles made it so damn good is because they were the hardest working band. They were just crazy what they would do and they just had that great Liverpool hard work ethic and that's why albums were once a year, twice a year, singles every year. It was just what they had and just the way they were brought up, Liverpool hard work. Um, Rory Storm played Liverpool Stadium, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, on a bill with Gene Vincent that the Beatles didn't make it onto. They were really the band in Liverpool. But they had one thing, the Beatles had one thing that Rory Storm and the Hurricanes didn't. And that was John Lennon and Paul McCartney could write songs. And that's probably an understatement. And so it was here, August the 15th, 1962. And I will show you the caravan park that it is alleged that the Beatles came to. So it's said to have been this caravan park where Ringo was staying. And which caravan it is, I have no idea. And John and Paul knocked and said, hey, you want to be in the Beatles? I don't know if they said it like that. <clears throat> um, uh, how they know it's that caravan park, I question. I think it's all myths to get people there, but there you go. It's said to have been that one. Now, as history tells it, and in films tells it, this happens in Hamburg, but it doesn't. It happens here, in Butlins, in Skegness. And I'm not sure if the red light district of Hamburg is quite, <laughs> is more glamorous than Butlins at Skegness. I, neither are particularly glamorous, but it tells you what Skegness is like if it's below the red light district of Hamburg in the 1950s. <laughs> Uh, so, another story, like when they were doing, when the Beatles were in Hamburg in 1962, George wrote a postcard back to V. Now, V is Rory Storm's mother, and it's said she was more invested in Rory Storm and the Hurricanes than even Rory Storm. She was his biggest supporter. He, she doubted on his son, as most mothers do. Well, the good ones. And through, when I mentioned earlier that George Harrison dated Iris, Rory Storm's sister, George Harrison and Paul McCartney and Jimmy Tarbuck and Cilla Black all spent a lot of time in what was called Stormsville. Now, Stormsville was Rory Storm's home with his mother and it was an open house and all these would become huge celebrities spent time there. And George Harrison loved V, all the Beatles loved V apparently. And I'll just read a postcard George, George sent to V in 1962 when he was in Hamburg. Right. Mrs. Violet Stubb, darling V, we are all missing you very much. To caress your teeth once more would be just heaven. Also to hold your lungs in mine and drink TB. John sends you his lunch. Also Paul and Ringworm greet you too. It's not too much fun here, but only one week to go now, so it's not so bad now. Have tea ready on Sunday the 18th. Cheerio, love from George and friends. So, it's kind of the relationship that Rory Storm's family even had with the Beatles. 
So, the Beatles came here 1962, August 15th, 1962. John Lennon and Paul McCartney made the drive all the way here from Liverpool to get Ringo. He was the missing piece. Um, now, I don't overly know, and if you know, you can comment and help me, if history tells it, I know Jaws Martin didn't like Pete Best, and so they needed a new drummer, and John Lennon didn't like, didn't think Pete Best was too great anyway. But I don't know if they made this trip after trying to do Love Me Do, and Jaws Martin saying this ain't gonna work, or they just did it. But it was only three weeks after the Beatles, which were John and Paul, were here, that they recorded the Love Me Do version we all know. The Love Me Do version with Pete Best you can find on Anthology 1 if you want to check it out. Now, Ringo was concerned for Rory Storm and the Hurricanes because they didn't have a drummer and they had to fill their gig, their gigs, their season at Butlins. And John and Paul said to Ringo, don't worry, Brian Epstein says they can have Pete Best. Pete Best is the drummer. I'm sure you know that if you're watching this. And Rory travelled from here back to Liverpool to get Pete Best. Pete Best was heartbroken. Um, he had good reason to be, as, as it would turn out. Eh? Um, so they never got Pete Best either. And they never had a drummer again. They, they fulfilled their season at Butlins um, and they played for years and years, but they never had an established drummer. And it would come to haunt Rory Storm in the Hurricanes. Um, he, I don't know if he was a little downtrodden when he was saying it, but he felt a bit I don't know, you're saying we had Ringo, one of his quotes, I'll put it in if I get it totally wrong, was we had Ringo for four years and we were a solid band and we were just a bit lost when he left. We made him, like, Rory Storm gave him what was called Star Time. And that's when Ringo started to sing and the Beatles would utilize this. And he would sing with the Beatles, of course. Now, after this, they were still kings of Liverpool and they tried to make it. Brian Epstein, the Beatles manager, produced Rory Storm's only properly recorded song, which was a cover of America. I wanna be in America, that one. Um, but, uh, it didn't do anything in the chart and Ringo tried to help as much as he could. He said, any time, any time that you want a recording session, I will sort it out for you. This is 1964, so the Beatles are huge, like bigger than anybody's dreams could imagine. But Roy Storm never took him up on it. It was said that he was happy to be the king of Liverpool. And his sister Iris would say, let me read a quote. He was happy to be the king of Liverpool. He was not, he was never keen on touring. He didn't want to give up his running for the Pembroke Harriers and he would never miss a Liverpool football game. Um, in 1967, tragedy would happen, happen to Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. And from here on, they're just snake bit. Ty O'Brien, or Breen, Ty O'Brien, who was the guitarist for Rory Storm, would collapse on stage and die. And after that, Rory Storm disbanded the Hurricanes. He would go on to be a DJ, and he was a DJ in Benidorm in Amsterdam. And it was in Amsterdam that he heard the news that his father had died. So 
So he came home to Liverpool to be with V, his mother, to look after her. Um, but at the same time, Rory got a really bad chest infection and he would take sleeping pills to help him sleep. And in 1972, he mixed these sleeping pills with alcohol and took an accidental overdose. Now, the real tragedy of this story is V found Rory in the morning, dead, stone cold, and having just lost her husband, and, and I imagine feeling everything had gone, she committed suicide next to Rory. And that is just the most heartbreaking story, if you ask me. Um, Rory Storm's legacy lives on in Liverpool. He is still fondly remembered in the Mersey beat scene that the Beatles made so famous. They are a footnote in history. They are the band Ringo came from. That is what they are in history. You can't get around it. But for a period, they challenged the Beatles and they made the Beatles I imagine work even harder because the Beatles weren't the best and they had to be. Um, so yeah, you can see some of their songs on YouTube. Um, Rory Storm was never big into doing his own tunes. He just wanted to do those rock and roll songs. And it said the reason Ringo left was because John and Paul were doing their own stuff and they were pretty good. Ringo, when they were in Hamburg, Ringo would play with the Beatles because Pete Best was poorly. And Ringo coming in to do the set, the Beatles were just wowed by this. They were like, it fits, it's perfect. And from then on, that's why the Beatles wanted Ringo. Um, as the Hollywood films say, and as I mentioned, um, it wasn't Hamburg where they met Ringo. They played on the same bill with Rory Storm lots of times. They knew Ringo very well. They knew the Hurricanes very well. And I'll put a little list of all the gigs that they shared the bill on. And there is plenty. But just a quick story. In between Christmas and New Year, as I needed fresh air, um, you would think I'd probably do this story in Liverpool, but uh, the mystery of the modern world, if I get to Liverpool, that strange foreign place of the other side of England, there's a thousand stories to tell in Liverpool, and I would put, I thought I'd just put Rory Storm in Skegness. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Sorry about the battery. Um, I hope you have a happy new year. I'll see you in 2021. Take care, bye.